fellow YouTubers, so, dude, Gecko30 here, and I am back, playing Legacy of Kane. So, in the last episode, guys, we pretty much managed to finally get both the Dark Reaver and the Light Reaver. So now we can be able to finally get past the area and move on to the next part of the story. So, let's finally move on, guys. First, let me switch back to the Dark Reaver here. Okay, so that's how I can do it, okay. So six is to go back and four is to switch forward, okay? I get it now.
An ancient gate, sealed by the powers of light and darkness, barred the way to the pillars beyond. To depart this place and continue my journey, I would have to find the means to open it. Well, luckily we already did. At last, the gate yielded to the powers of light and darkness with which the Reaver had been forged. The way to the pillars was open. Let's go. Now we're back with Kane's story. This place long before my birth. Centuries before the corruption set in that would poison the land and put me on the treacherous path I still followed. In the future, these edifices would be condemned to darkness and decay. I would cause their fall and build my empire upon their ruins. Was it still possible? That with the right knowledge, the right moves, I might one day see Nosgoth restored, the pillars pure once more. My answer, according to Mobius, lay somewhere to the west of this place. I could restore the world, perhaps, but never again could I give Nosgoth back her innocence.
Offering only this empty vista, was this another of Mobius's little jokes? Or a puzzle for which I had not yet found the answer? This symbol seemed familiar. Perhaps I needed to recover another fragment of the balance emblem before I could proceed. Stone disc. Balance emblem. Flame. <laughs> the way he makes it sound, though. Like just flame. Ah, <laughs> Oh, 
Part of the, tele the telekinetic ability.
another fragment of the balance emblem. This one endowed with the properties of dimension. Perhaps this would reveal the mystery that lay west of the pillars, if Mobius spoke the truth, and there was indeed something there to find. Dang. I thought I could be able to make it. I mean, I, I probably could, but the game is probably keeping me from getting there. Dimension? Dimension. Yep. Not bad.
The mist that shrouded this lake miraculously now cleared away, revealing an ancient citadel. So Mobius had not lied. Or perhaps this was simply another of the time streamer's illusions meant to slow my true endeavor. God dang it! There's too many! Shall we? Oh, we're already on Raziel's story again? Dang. Huh. Why is it that it feels like Kane's like, stories are always short, but then when it comes to Raziel's, they're a bit long? The vampire hunters, brazen as they were, feared to walk these paths. I knew one spirit haunted this place. Perhaps there were others as well.
These smoldering sconces seemed as though they would ignite. If only I had a fire source.
I sought to unravel the mystery of my fate, and in this image lay my first clue. For this scene depicted the forging of the Reaver, the weapon destined to become my prison, and I recognized its maker. The years had changed him, but this was unmistakably the vampire Vorador, and in this era, he still lived. If I could reach him before Mobius's mob hunted him down, he would provide the answers I sought. These images chronicled Vorador's creation. As I already knew, he had not been born a vampire, but had been turned by the infamous Janos Ordrin. But this mural suggested that Vorador's origins were even more significant. Apparently, he was the first human to whom the Dark Gift had been passed. This was the vampire's desperate bid to preserve their bloodline, for their enemies had cursed them not only with bloodthirst, but with sterility as well. All right, guys, so we are going to stop it here for now. That will be all for this time. If y'all enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and comment, and please subscribe. And I do hope to see you all in the next episode, guys. See y'all later. Bye-bye, guys. Oh, well,